Welcome to Under the Radar, a show about independent iOS app development. I'm Marco Arment. And I'm David Smith. Under the Radar is never longer than 30 minutes, so let's get started. So this week we're going to talk a little bit about iAd and ad-driven uh, app revenue models, because uh, there's some news this past week that iAd uh, was shutting down part of its offerings, and the, it's shutting down what's called the app network. And a lot of people, it was a very confusing message, and a lot of people kind of thought this was shutting down all of iAd, and it's kind of confusing as to what parts of iAd are left. And and David, you know, since you have a lot of experience with ad-funded apps, uh, I and and I think most most developers who most people hear from in podcasts and stuff don't have a lot of experience. You know, most developers who, in podcasts and who have blogs and stuff are trying to sell paid apps or at least free apps with paid in-app purchases. And I, I don't hear a lot of discussion from people who have much or any experience, uh, especially significant experience with app-driven or with ad-driven revenue models and apps. And, and you do. So I'm, I'd, I'd love to hear a lot from you on this with your experiences and your thoughts around, uh, you know, what, what's going on with ads? What, what kind of led to this point? Um, what the reality is of ad-funded app, app development today? And then what this, what this announcement really means and, and what it might mean for you. Uh, so I've, well, I definitely wanted to dive into a little bit of first of like the background of where I'm coming from with ads. And so like, whenever I think about revenue for an application, the first thing obviously is like you think about, well, how am I going to make money? And you can really, I guess, make money in three main ways. Like you can have an ongoing payment from somebody, you know, something like a subscription. You can get a one-time payment um, from your from your customer where, you know, which is the typical sort of like paid upfront model. And then you'd have something where you get no payment from your customer. And so you're either then relying on advertising where someone else is paying you for that customer to use your application um, or you have just no revenue at all, in which case you're probably, you know, you're going for some kind of market share play or something where direct revenue isn't important to you. Um, and so why would you end up using advertising? If an application that's going to have a lot of people and the majority of which who don't want to actually pay to use your application with money, which is a lot of applications, especially in the iOS app store. Um, and so I've used advertising in almost all of my app or it, for almost the entire like length of my history of being an app developer um for i one of my earliest apps i even originally built my own app network and like just trying to do direct sales for it and that didn't really work in scale and so i pretty quickly moved to i think back then this was probably in 2009 ish it was probably ad mob i think was the big one back then and then at you know iad was introduced in i think 2010 and so I jumped onto using that as quickly as I could. Um, and I had always did pretty well for me, you know, so Apple's, it was Apple's platform. It did, um, was nice and integrated into the platform and it did well. You know, I always got pretty good fill rates, like, which is the amount of time that I ask for an ad that I actually get one back. For me, it was usually like three quarters to almost like 98%, I think often uh, for fill rates. I had pretty quality ads, good revenue, and I was overall generally pretty happy with it. Um, like over time, the, the the quality of iAd has certainly changed, but I think it's probably more in some ways a reflection on how the store has changed in you know since like 2010, where now a lot of the ads are just for you know sort of like the the Candy Crush, uh, Game of War um, kind of games where it's all about trying to drive downloads for apps that are you know then use in-app purchase to. To, uh, you know, sort of to get revenue from people. And so that's what most of my ads are for, which means, you know, they're not, that's not great. They're not awesome things. But at this point, like apps or I, advertising probably makes somewhere between 40 to 45% of the revenue I get. Um, and it's definitely like the biggest source of revenue from my most important apps to me. Um, and so that's kind of a, a weird place to find myself now that I find that iAd is going to be shutting down or closing or doing something dramatic um, in the next couple of, in the, I think by June or so, it'll be changing. And I don't think we know exactly what it's going to look like after that, but it's definitely going to be different. So I, I know that, you know, you talk about you talk about the fill rate, and I've heard various things. I've heard from people who aren't happy with IAD's fill rate. I've heard, is, is it getting worse over time? Um, it varies. And so this is one of those funny things with advertising. Like I've heard from some people who get like, because it's all based, the adverse, the, the ads that you get are always going to be based on the demographics of the people who you use your app and how they use it. And some kind of, you know, secret algorithm that is trying to 
pair people up. And so like for my apps for like audiobooks and pedometer plus plus, um, I've usually had pretty good fill rates. Um, I wouldn't say they've gone down over time. Maybe the, some of the rates have gone down over time, but those are even really hard to track because they're so cyclical. Like every January 1st, my, um, like advertising rates drop by at least a half because everyone's advertising budgets, you know, were sort of all spent up until then. And no one buys ads that first, like the first couple of weeks of January. And so things like cycle dramatically, but like I would say I had is it's, it's maybe it's gotten gone down slightly. Um, I think overall in the advertising market, I think in a lot of ways things are going down and the weird thing that you then start having to like balance those, like what kind of ads are you even talking about? Like most of my apps only do banner ads. Um, you can also do interstitials and all kinds and sort of more aggressive forms of advertising that completely take over the application until you watch a 30 second video or those types of things, well, which obviously get better and better rates accordingly. Right. But I mean, of course, annoy people more and more. Yes. <laughs> yep. I mean, that's always a tricky balance with advertising is like what works is being more intrusive and more annoying and and like you can there are things that work that aren't intrusive and annoying but there's always this constant tension this pressure to you know make a little bit more or to combat some other kind of downturn by just making things a little bit more annoying or a little bit more creepy in in, in, you know data privacy issues or things like that there's always these pressures and a lot of times people have to cave to those things in order to even survive to have their businesses survive it's it's a very tricky balance and in some areas, like in, in podcasting right now, we are lucky that podcast advertising right now is still very high quality, and and that you know we're able to command great rates and have ads that aren't too annoying um, at, because of the nature of the medium and the market conditions right now. But apps, I think, are are similar to the web in in that it's very very hard to get great ad rates for in app ads. I mean, have you found that to be the, the case? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's like I said, obviously, I'm still making a, almost half of my revenue from them. So I mean, there is money to be made there. But yeah, it, it's the volumes you need to make a living doing it is pretty substantial. It's maybe the better way to, to, to look at it in much the same way as like with the web or something where, like you say, with the podcast, like the number of listeners you have to have before you can have, you know, a, a non substantial revenue coming from a podcast is dramatically less than the number of um, users you need for an, you know for an application to have any kind any kind of sort of real tangible revenue you're talking about probably you know tens if not hundreds of thousands of users a day um, of your application before you're going to be getting into that into, into into something that you could really like make a run at um, which is and then you have to keep doing it all the time being in some ways it's nice because advertising is based on people using your application and so it's nicely in some ways it's nice i've always said that i like that it aligns my uh, people using the application with the revenue i get so if i engage people more if i make people really like the app and come back to it time and time again my revenue goes up which is nice but um it still always creates all these weird tensions for like well what if there was another way that i could get people back into the application what if i sent them a push notification that said <laughs> hey you know hey, you, you haven't checked your steps in a while maybe you should you've earned a new step bomb yeah like there's so many <laughs> things that you start to get into that get cross all kinds of lines that um like it's a really it, it forces you to really be thoughtful in a way that is is a bit weird like Sometimes I like just the paid app, the, the paid model, which is nice because it's simple. Like in some ways, I, I can just be lazy about it and be like, well, they gave me money. I gave them app. Like, that's great. That's nice and simple versus all having to really think about like, does this cross the line? Is this like too, ag- is this too aggressive? Is this too annoying? Is this going to like work in in a way that is going to ruin my reputation? But like, it could make me more money, but really make the app not so good uh, to use? Like, it's some really hard questions that things like advertising force you to to face up to. Well, and I think, you know, um, among like the, the kind of like Apple enthusiast community, I think ads and apps are taboo. The, I, you know, you don't see people like panic making apps with ads in them. Like the, like the idea of the, of like the, the, the high end indie kind of craft app scene Almost nobody in that scene uses ads in any apps that people have actually heard of and use. Like some people will have like a secret app on the side, you know, that like like uh, like I've heard like like David Barnard at App Cub, he always talks about he has he has this mirror app, and that has, you know that's like where where he experiments with with revenue models and stuff, and they have ads in that. That's fine, um, but like you know like you don't see like. 
Tweetbot five free with ads or pay to unlock them. Like that's you hardly ever see ads in that in that kind of like high end app development community. And, and I think ultimately, uh, I think that's temporary. I think we will get to a point where ads start moving in just because the other revenue models are getting so much harder. You know, because as you said, like it is that's a really good point that like it does make sense for apps that are used frequently. Like, you know, if you have some kind of like quick utility app that is hardly ever used, that like the kind of thing you keep on your phone for occasional use, or maybe if you're traveling, you know, something like that, or maybe it's like a special kind of like unit converter that you only need four times a year, but you're really glad it's there. In those kind of instances, ad funded apps probably don't make a lot of sense. But if it's something like the like a newsreader where you're you're going into that every single day, you know, like then then and spending meaningful time in it, then I think that makes a lot of sense. And that actually, have have you found like is it possible for ads in in frequently used apps in in a high pressure um, in in an, in an environment where there's a lot of pressure to keep the upfront price down, like the app store? Might ads make more money for like daily use apps than a paid upfront model could? I think probably. I mean, I think that's, I mean, honestly, that's why I do, like, why I have ads in so many of my applications. It's because I, that is a way to make more money probably than I would from paid apps. And for, I mean, it's it's a bit, I haven't done too many of these now because most of my apps, I just, I, like, my default is that the app will be free with some other form of revenue, whether that's an in-app purchase or ads or probably both. But back in the day, I used to do the kind of, where you'd have the, like, ad version that was free and the paid version that was you know that you'd charge for and it was like people could choose like do you want the ad free or the or the other one and there was a time when they sort of gave each other a run for their money but i don't know probably for the least the last three or four years it's been in almost entirely in the free like and i know this is my own behavior like that's in some ways the expectation um for apps in the app store now is that they're going to be free to free to download and there may be some other things that are you know, either advertising or an in-app purchase later, but if it's not free, you, you just there's this massive wall, and it feels like the wall is getting bigger and bigger now. And so, if you want to make, if your goal is to make it like a living from a, from an app, there's a very good chance that advertising will need to be something that you at least strongly consider, if not um, implement and use in your application. Speaking of which, we are brought to you this week. <laughs> I knew that I was trying to figure when to insert this. <laughs> We're brought to you this week uh, by our friends at Igloo. Because they are Canadian and named after something cold, they are not afraid to advertise in January. Uh, Igloo is the internet you will actually like. With Igloo, you don't have to be stuck at your desk to do your work. You can manage your task list from your laptop during a meeting, share status updates from your phone as you're leaving a client's site, and access the latest version of a file from home. You can even do this in your pajamas or with no pants. Nobody will ever know. These days, everything is mobile. Your work should be too. Now, if you ever have looked at a corporate intranet, you've probably thought something like, whoever designed this must truly hate me. (laughs) Well, those days are over. Igloo allows you to make your intranet feel like a place you actually want to be. It's surprisingly configurable, and you can completely rebrand it to give it the look and feel of your team. Thanks to group spaces, role-based access permissions, and an an easy-to-use drag-and-drop widget editor, you can reorganize the whole platform to fit exactly how your teams work. With our mobile lives, people are increasingly bringing in outside apps into companies, and sensitive documents are getting scattered across different platforms. This can cause some big problems, but not if you use Igloo. Igloo allows you to integrate services like Box, Google Drive, and Dropbox into one big, easy-to-secure platform. If you know terms like 256-bit encryption, single sign-on, and Active Directory integrations, then you'll know just how safe and secure Igloo is. You can, share, you can share files with your coworkers, you can all collaborate, you can track who's read them with read receipts... Go and sign up for Igloo right now. You can try Igloo for free. And for any team with up to 10 people, it's free forever. So check it out today, igloosoftware.com slash radar. That's igloosoftware.com slash radar for the internet you will actually like. Thank you so much to Igloo for, for supporting Under the Radar and all of Relay FM. So getting back to IAD, what was the announcement? So the announcement said that they were shutting down the app network. Can you go into what that was and what's left this is all very ambiguous. And as somebody who, like I said, makes a very substantial amount of my revenue from IAD, I've tried my best to understand this, um, be it both from the official announcement they made and the various bits of like rumors or like leaks or other things that sort of 
like before Apple actually made their official announcement, there was a bunch of articles from all over the place. People, people kind of talking about that Apple was going to be scaling down their sales team. They were going to be changing things around. Um, so like they specifically said that the iAd app network will be discontinued as of June 30th of this year. Um, although we are no longer accepting new ads into the apps into the network, advertising campaigns will continue to run and be still earning advertising revenue until June 30th. As best I understand, like the iAd app network is one of, it's a term I was, I spent the last like couple of days trying to find a definition for what that actually means. And I haven't found any, like <laughs> it's it, the exact, like it could be that the app network is the part of iAd right now that you use to, if, if I wanted to promote my app, like I could put, make an ad for pedometer plus plus, I could put it into um, iAd and then other apps that are showing iAds would be show, you know, then promoting it for me and I'd pay for that. Um, it could be that. I think it's also possible that it's the sort of the whole way that which ads are being collected and aggregated right now, both from that and then from the original thing, like back in 2010, when iAd was first launched, it was supposed to be about big brands. And, you know, there was Steve Jobs ta- up on the stage talking about how they were going to partner with all these big brands to make these really emotional experiences and, you know, to r- raise and elevate the thing, which but that lasted like a month. Well, it lasted, it didn't last very long. That's it. That's probably fair to say. I remember there was a, like, was a Nissan Leaf had one. Um, there were a couple of like big brands that had them, but it just didn't seem. I think it might have literally only been a couple. <laughs> yeah, and that never really went anywhere. And so I don't think it's that. But it seems like the iAd as we know it now is going to be going away um, from w- other, not necessarily from Apple's direct announcements, but from some of the other leaks. It sounds like they are going to be continuing to. There will continue to be an iAd framework in iOS. Um, I'm not completely sure on that. Like, it's possible in iOS 10 that it's just going to go away. Um, that would seem a little weird, but it's possible. Um, and it may be replaced by something more algorithmic or straightforward, or it's entirely possible that Apple is just going to sort of back away from this whole thing. Uh, I mean, I think the reality, though, is either way, whatever is going to happen, as of June 30th, the revenue models that are based, like my own, on, you know, substantially on iAd are likely going to need to be prepared for a change. Um, exactly what that looks like i'm still honestly working out for myself but whatever we do whatever it is it's likely not going to be as performant in terms of revenue um or as from a fill rate perspective and all these things as you know the major thing they're doing now because it definitely doesn't sound like they're just like oh we're going to taking what we have and going in a different direction there's definitely like we're discontinuing a large swath of this um, and going to be potentially replacing it with something or maybe not at all Um, but it's definitely a big massive change if you use iad coming you know coming in 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 june presumably like you know right after wwdc maybe like well and they'll announce um or during wwdc they'll announce what's going to replace it or what we need to do which will be a little short notice but um something's definitely coming yeah i mean it's interesting like if you think back about like why iad was created in the first place it was to to basically like apple saw that ad networks on mobile were becoming a thing ad funded apps were likely to become you know a big revenue stream and there were all these kind of creepy ad companies coming in and trying to make these kind of crappy uh, ad embeds for apps. And so I, I imagine the reason iAd exists is because Apple, you know, Steve said it right on stage. He said in that announcement that, like, these things frankly suck and that we think we can do better. And, you know, Apple wanted the, what they wanted control over this monetization method for themselves. But it didn't really play out that way. What, what has played out is turns out Apple is not, not a very good ad company. It, it just seems like it's not the kind of thing Apple is good at, especially with all their stances on privacy and everything else. Like, it just seems like running an, running a big ad network kind of conflicts with what they do. But the it, it, maybe it's the lesser of two evils because you know, like the if they don't run the ad network, then the third party ad networks are the only choice for developers who who have ad supported apps, rather than just being like a backup choice. So I wonder, like. You know, assuming it's, and man, see when I first heard the 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 app network was being shut down, I thought they meant those little templates developers could use to just make their you know rather than having the whole interactive experience, it was like this template that you as any any developer could sign up and you'd basically get like an image and then if you if it was tapped, it would show like a little app store slide up sheet, so you wouldn't have to really do any custom programming. There wouldn't be any custom interactivity. It would just be a banner image for your app, and you, people tap it and it shows the app store page. Uh, and I, I actually I. Did you ever pay for those? Did you ever buy those before? I've tried them. They never worked for me. I mean, I think they only work for an application that 
you are going, if you are like really going, if, if, if the value of like each customer to you is quite a lot, you know, which I imagine if you're one of these like free to play game kind of things, you can probably get to there where, you know, if you're paying a few dollars to acquire a new user, that's actually worthwhile to you overall, because, you know, the average value of a customer is bigger than that. Uh, but for me, it never made sense. Like even for my paid applications, there's I, my average, like the amount of money I typically would get from somebody um, is just so low in comparison that it just never made sense. Yeah, that's too bad. So so it, it could be that they're shutting that down because the economics have just made it not that effective for most developers. Um, or it could be that the app network might mean running all iAds in people's apps, in which case they would just, because like the, the new Apple News app still uses iAd. And so maybe they're saying everything else about iAd is being shut down except for the ones running in Apple's own apps. Or maybe they're saying only those, you know, special little developer template ones are getting shut down. Who knows? But assuming it's assuming it's the former that like that nobody will be able to use iAd in their apps anymore, which which is which would be the the part that you're thinking would probably be like the worst case scenario here. Where would you go what would you do next? Like are there third party options that are any good? Uh is is there any kind of like clear winner? Like what's, what, what is the, what is the landscape like as far as you know? So this is the part that makes me really sad, like with this news. And I, I totally understand you know, it's like, it, it's always been a bit of an odd thing for Apple to be in the advertising business because so much of what they do is completely orthogonal to that. Like they're not in general, they're all about like having really strong privacy and having all kinds of things like that, that are all about like, we want to know is at least about you. And we're going to give you a premium experience, which is typically not the advertising model. Um, and so what I've always liked is that, like, hey, they have this advertising network. And so I can kind of like why I just I don't actually use uh, do any backfilling in any of my apps. Like I don't do the thing where it's like even though I don't get 100 percent fill, I'm OK with that because I'm like, you know what? I ads are good. And I've never had like seen an I ad in my application that made me feel really uncomfortable. Like I don't feel great about some of them, but you know, if you with just like if you just open the floodgates to like every advertise every ad ever, we all kind of know where that goes. Like you look at the web right now, the kind of ads that you start to see at the bottom of like, hey, if you like this story, you may also like these other stories about like horrible things right. or just total scams. Like yeah, it's, like uh... it's 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 terrible, and that's where ultimately I imagine a lot of advertising. We'll go in apps as well. And I like that. At least I felt like, you know, like Apple with iAd was like a firewall against that. And I could say, you know, like, okay, maybe I'm making a bit less money doing this, but I feel confident that what I'm going to end up with isn't like terrible and make me feel squirm. And, you know, I'm going to get screenshots from people being like, look at the ad that your app was showing me and for, you know, for some awful thing. So where I'm going now is kind of a weird and open question. Like there are so many um, ad networks that like it's kind of crazy and a lot of them have like really complicated or confusing names you know like we have ad mob ad colony ad falcon ad rally mod fox tap it vidobia v- vungle tap jump um <laughs> like, are these real <laughs> these are actual ones that i was recently just like I, I was quickly before we were preparing i was like pulling in these names and i'm like those are some ad networks that exist right now and it sounds like like parody names <laughs> yeah but like that's what we have and there's Dozens of them. And I mean, I imagine the biggest ones like AdMob is probably one of the bigger ones because it's run by Google, who is obviously like one of the biggest advertising companies if in the world, if not the biggest. I'm sure Apple loves that. <laughs> um, there's, I think you can do some things with Facebook. There's a few others that are kind of big. But um, what I'm going to facing now is like, it's this weird question of like, well, do I just pick another one and hope for the best? Do I use kind of an aggregator, um, which is a lot of the way a lot of people do this type of thing where you'll um, download this big massive blob of like third party code you'll shove it into your application and it includes the all the SDKs for like dozens of different adver- uh, advertising networks and you'll sign up for all of them and you'll kind of be bidding back and forth between them so that whoever has the best ad for you right now you'll show and it'll switch between them dynamically um, but like the more you do that the less control you ultimately have on what you're showing in your app. And also like the thing that always makes me nervous is now like the more third party code I have to put in my application, like that's really scary, both from uh, like customer privacy per concerns and things like they could be doing all kinds of things in my applications that I maybe wouldn't really like. 
Um, you know, it's like you, for all I know, like they're going to be popping up all kinds of uh, permission requests in my application that my customers assume are me asking for it rather than them. Like that's not something that they could entirely do because I'm running their code um, that I probably can't see the source of. Yeah, not to mention like making network requests or anything like that. I mean, like, or even even just like like any kind of uh, use of like private APIs. If they get in trouble for that, then really you're getting in trouble for that. Like, it's it's a huge risk. Yeah, and I love that I had at least like it was a system framework. Like it shipped in the OS. I had to bundle nothing. It was just in the same way. If it's just like me including you know, using HealthKit in my application or using AV Foundation, like using IAD was just a thing. And if I'm not going to be able to do that, like at some point, I'm going to have to include some code that I don't really want to include. Um, Or I have to decide that, you know what, I'm just going to have to radically change my business and move away from this because there's ultimately like there's going to be some kind of a line that I have to find between like how comfortable I am I with, you know, whoever they are. And I'm sure if I talk to the the salesmen at these various companies, I'm sure they'll all, oh, no, we're, you know, we take privacy very important be very seriously it's very important to us <laughs> oh and, sure but like i felt comfortable when apple did that but I, there's very few companies that i would feel comfortable about that and ultimately i'll probably like my gut says i'll end up at least exper- at least initially planning to go to something like google if not not because i think google's a you know like a, a not creepy company but at least they're a big enough company that if they were doing something truly dubious like it would be well known and they would probably be held more accountable to it than like some kind of fly by night vc funded thing that just sort of appeared one day and i was like oh you know we have great rates and awesome ads like maybe you do but i don't really you don't have a lot of history there in a way that you know i'm more i'm less worried like if if google's being really sketchy at least i met there's people who are going to know that and like you know hold them accountable to that at least somewhat but I don't know. It's really something that I'm kind of struggling with through right now is exactly where I'm going to go. Cause you know, if I had truly did just go away and just disappeared from my app, it's like, there goes, you know, 40% of my business, like in terms of revenue just disappeared. And so I need to work out how far down that road I feel comfortable with, with, you know, like other people's code, other people's, um, the, you know, showing things in my apps that really maybe I don't agree with or like, Um, but you know, ultimately I have to ship a product that I feel comfortable with. So it's going to be a really interesting next couple of months as I kind of filter through that. All right. Well, best of luck. I think your plan sounds about right. I think I agree that, you know, going to, going to like one of the biggest companies that is most reputable in, you know, AdMob or Google, like, you know, that, that, that makes the most sense. I think because you're right. I think like, even though any ad company is creepy to some degree, I think the the giant ones like Google, like that's prob they're probably the least creepy among a bunch of very creepy companies. Yeah, <laughs> like the smaller ones are way scarier to me. <laughs> so, all right, well, that's I think that wraps it up for today. Um, best of luck with that, and I hope I'm sure we'll be talking about this more uh, as as you get new experience with these things over time. And uh, so, I look forward to hearing more about it and as as this, as this whole uh, thing unfolds. Yep. So uh, thanks a lot to everybody for listening. Uh, please uh, recommend us on Overcast, and uh, you can review us on iTunes if anybody still uses that. And uh, we will uh, talk to you next week. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and we'll see you next week. Bye.